Bonjour à tous. Bienvenue à cette conférence de presse. On a avec nous euh, trois ministres aujourd'hui qui vont d'abord euh, prendre la parole. Euh, le ministre de la Sécurité publique, Marco Mendicino, le ministre des Transports, Omar Agabra, et le ministre de la Santé, jean euh, Ensuite, euh, on a également l'administratrice en chef de la Santé publique, Thérèse Tam, et le sous-administrateur en chef de la Santé publique, Thérèse Tam, et to your questions if needed. Statements from the ministers. Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. Je tiens tout d'abord à reconnaître que nous sommes sur le territoire traditionnel du peuple algonquin Anishinaabe. Algonquin Anishinaabe Territory. I'm very pleased to be here with you avec mes collègues, today with my colleagues, Omar the Honorable Agabra, Omar Al-Gabra, Minister of Transport, Minister of Transport the Honorable Marco Mendicino, Minister of Public Dr. Safety, Dr. Tam and Dr. Nguyen, who, who are joining us virtually. Thank you for being there today. There's been a lot in the news recently about COVID-19. And we want to provide an update to you Canadians on what we know about the situation and what we are doing to respond to it. Dr. Tam and Dr. Nyu will provide soon further remarks on the global epidemiological situation. But for now, let me focus on our response. I'll be speaking about three immediate measures that we will be, that we are announcing and implementing today. Premièrement, nous ajoutons First, trois pays à la liste des sept pays countries to the list of seven countries we currently have that we spoke about Malawi, last Friday. These three countries are Egypt, Malawi, and Nigeria. As you remember, the foreign nationals from these seven countries and now from these ten countries, these foreign nationals who have been to those countries will not be able to enter Canada if they have been to those countries over the past two weeks. Also, Canadians and permanent residents, as well as all of those who have the right to return to Canada, who have transited through these 10 countries over the past two weeks will, when they arrive to Canada, quarantine. They will have to be tested at the airport and await the results of their tests before exiting quarantine. That is for Canadians and permanent residents who are vaccinated. Those who are unvaccinated will follow the current uh, measures. For all countries, that is, they will be tested on day one, quarantined for 14 days, and be tested again on day eight. We are announcing today is that all air travelers coming from outside Canada, apart from the United States, will now need to be tested at the airport in which they are landing in Canada, whether they are vaccinated or unvaccinated. They will then need to isolate themselves until they get the result of their test. Obviously, those that come to Canada um, and are not vaccinated from anywhere in the world uh, need to do a quarantine of 14 days, as it has always been the, the, the case, and do a test both on day one and on day eight. The third measure is as we prepare for a possible extension of that last measure to all travelers by land and by air coming from the United States, we will be working with provinces and territories to see how that could be done. We don't know if it would need to be done or whether it could be done if the situation evolves and requires such a, a, a policy to be implemented. And on that, I will be having a meeting with all of my provincial and territorial colleagues in about two hours from now to share those measures and to see how we can prepare for other eventualities. J'aimerais terminer par une série de remarques additionnelles. La première, c'est que on demande 
Et on demande is that we are asking sur sur the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, the NACI, to quickly provide to the Canadian government up-to-date directives on the util and the use of boosters in the so context this, of the this, new this, Omicron variant. This, this, uh, this measure, this, this call that we are making is to, to, to uh, ask NACI to provide quick guidance on whether we should revise national, uh, national standards, national attitudes and actions on the use of boosters across Canada in the context of the new uh, Omicron variant. Now, let's, let us also uh, remind Canadians that those rules have always changed over the last uh, 20 months and change and will continue to change as the situation evolves. So this is what we are doing today. It may well be that as we gain time, we find that the new variant is of less concern than what some experts might be fearing, but the situation might also evolve differently. So we're running Canadians that travel rules and border rules in particular can always change, and that involves both testing uh, and quarantine measures, and we will be watching the situation, as all Canadians will do, over the next days and weeks. I also want to remind Canadians that today, November 30th, we are implementing the directive requiring all travellers, air or rail travellers, within Canada and coming to Canada must be vaccinated. This is an excellent measure that is very relevant and comes at the right moment in the context of this new variant. An additional remark. Yesterday, the health ministers of G7 countries gathered. It was a very important meeting, and we recognized how important it was to share information during these uncertain and rapidly changing times with the Omicron variant. We have agreed to continue to share reliable information transparently on a daily basis on the situations in our countries. And we also talked about the information that we could gain from other countries. And publicly, we recognized, I want to say publicly, that we recognized the transparency that South Africa has shown over the past week. This has been difficult for South Africa and for other countries that have seen more cases of Omicron. It is absolutely essential if we can, if we want to maintain the efficiency of our public health measures, including uh, travel and border measures, but also maintain the ability to be confident uh, that we are going to keep working internationally in a, st in a strong and, and collaborative manner. Finally, a reminder that uh, what is most important, as Dr. Tam and Dr. New will probably remind us in a moment, what is most important in the context of COVID-19 is the application of public health measures and vaccination for all Canadians. These are the measures that make a difference when it comes to the biggest source of COVID-19 challenges, which is community transmission. So we know it's difficult for all Canadians, but we know that all Canadians see that there is hope. And there, has been, there has always been hope as we successfully in Canada, compared to many other countries, go through the crisis in better ways, no, just both from the economic side, but also from the health side. I was reminded recently by uh, PHAC officials that we, if, we, if Canadians and their governments had acted in the same manner as we saw in the United States, we would have seen in Canada 60,000 more people dying of COVID-19. So Canadians can be proud of the fact that we have worked together, we've been supporting each other, uh, governments alike, and because of that, we will go through this level of uncertainty in the best possible uh, manner. So with this, I will now turn to Minister Agabra. Merci, Jean um, Thank you, jean -Yves. Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. As we've been saying from the start, the COVID-19 pandemic can change rapidly. And when it does, our government continues to take unprecedented action to protect the health and safety of all Canadians by introducing measures to prevent COVID-19 and new variants 
of the various from being introduced and spread in Canada. We already have implemented layers of protective measures at our borders, including vaccination requirements, pre-departure PCR testing, and mandatory random testing. Today, to confront the Omicron challenge, we are taking additional action to prevent further importation and spread. Canadians and permanent residents who have been to any of the 10 countries that Minister Duclos listed, even those who are fully vaccinated, must be tested before entering Canada. Starting tonight, these tests cannot have been administered in any of the countries the minister named. This means that Canadians will need to stop and obtain valid results in a third country before entering Canada. Upon entering Canada, these travelers with a right of entry will be tested again and required to wait in a designated quarantine facility until the result of their day one test result is known. If the test result is negative, vaccinated travelers can then follow their quarantine plan and isolate until they receive results of day eight test. Unvaccinated travelers must remain in the designated quarantine facility for their entire quarantine period. These testing measures will allow us to assess the evolving situation and determine any additional and appropriate measures. Notre priorité our priority is to protect the health of Canadians. I've said it before. Vaccination is one of our best tools to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and its variants. That's why we've put in place a mandatory vaccination requirement for travelers boarding planes and trains in Canada. And as of today, passengers flying on domestic, transborder or international flights departing from Canada and passengers on Via Rail and the Rocky Mountaineer trains must be fully vaccinated to board with very few exceptions. A partir d'aujourd'hui, les voyageurs devront travelers will have to be vaccinated. Finally, I want to repeat what Minister Duclos said. I want to ask all Canadians to remain cautious and prudent. The pandemic is not over. To get vaccinated, to follow public health advice, and if they are thinking about traveling, to recognize that travel measures could change at any moment. Our government's top priority is protecting Canadians' health and safety, and our response to the COVID-19 pandemic is guided by the latest science and research. Thank you very much. Merci. And now I'll pass the mic to Minister Medicino. Bon après-midi tout le monde. Thank Hello, you everyone. to Ministers Duclos and Algabra for your updates. Keeping Canadians safe remains our absolute top priority. And as we continue to hear and learn of reports of the new variant of the virus, we have to double down on keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe. That includes following the latest public health measures and making sure we are as protected as possible by getting the vaccine. I want to thank all Canadians who continue to book their shots and receive them, including some adults now for a third dose and many of our children under 12 who are now eligible. You're doing yourselves, your families, friends and caring citizens a great service. With respect to Omicron and other variants of concern, we continue to take the strongest possible measures based on the latest scientific evidence and advice in concert with all of our partners. Last week, we quickly announced and implemented new measures at our borders and beyond in response to the Omicron variant, and we are making further precautionary adjustments again today as the situation evolves. As my colleagues have mentioned, those measures will work to slow down possible importations of the Omicron variant of concern. We are also working quickly with provinces and territories to determine how we could expand testing capacity 
to include all travelers from all countries, including the United States, from both land and air, if needed, in the future. Canada's border service officers have been on the front line since the beginning of the pandemic, have done exemplary work in keeping Canadians safe, and I want to take a moment to thank all of them for their extraordinary and tireless work as we continue to manage the pandemic. They will continue to perform admirably and help ensure that these measures are followed. I would also like to remind all travellers, Canadians and foreign nationals who travel by land, air or water for long or short trips to submit your health and travel information in the free ArriveCan app or website before arriving in Canada. It is mandatory. Foreign national travelers who don't submit their information through ArriveCan may be denied entry into Canada. Canadians who don't submit their information via ArriveCan won't be eligible for exemptions and may face additional delays at the border and they may be subject to fines as well. I want to thank all travelers for their collaboration and patience as these new changes may increase delays at the border in the coming days and weeks. Our border service officers will never compromise the health and safety of Canadians for the sake of border wait times. We are all monitoring the public health situation in Canada and around the world together in real time and we will continue to adapt health and border measures as needed. In closing, we say to everyone, get vaccinated. Follow the public health care measures which have been put in, pl in place. Continue to follow the measures that we have put in place at the border because they are there for your protection, your safety, and indeed the safety and protection of all Canadians. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup, uh, Marco. Alors, Thank you very je, much, Marco. Je crois que pour, so uh, I believe du temps, to les, uh, gain some time, ne pas tout de suite, the mais two doctors will not be speaking uh, right away, but they will respond and answer any questions that you may have on the epidemi epidemiological situation and on the more technical aspects of the possible impacts of the Omicron variant on virulence, transmissibility, and the effects of the vaccines. So I believe we are ready to move to questions. Engagement. Um, we have uh, approximately 45 minutes uh, for questions. We'll start off in the room, priority to questions in the room. Uh, and then if we have some time, we'll go to the phone lines. Uh, one question, one follow-up question. And we agreed that we will not be will not be having interpretation in this room during press conferences. Monsieur Duclos, j'aurais une question pour vous. Have a question. Why these three countries in particular, Mr. Duclos, and do you not fear that these countries that are put on our no-fly list uh, will be less forthcoming in sharing medical information in future, for example, South Africa? Thank you for this excellent question. Answer from Minister Duclos. Why these three countries? Why the new measures regarding mandatory testing when arriving in the country? Why these countries? Well, because based on the information we have from the Public Health Agency of Canada, we have our experts here with us today, there are concerns. Well, there is an issue of transparency. It is not bad faith. It's really an issue of capacity. The three countries, in addition to the other ones that were mentioned earlier, have a more difficulty measuring what is happening within their borders. It is therefore more difficult to use the multiple layers of protection that are traditional that would allow people who were in those countries to enter Canada. So it's not based on nationality at all. It, it, re it is really based on uh, who has transited through those countries, for example, somebody from France who went through Egypt last week who wanted to come, who wishes to come to Canada will be treated the same way as uh, somebody from Egypt or from Nigeria trying to come to Canada if they've been to one of those 10 countries 
uh, in the past two weeks. Now, regarding uh, whether this provides incentives of any kind for countries to work together, well, the answer is that we must effectively do more to ensure international cooperation. Between the G7 country health ministers yesterday, we agreed to help some of these countries that want to be more transparent, but who have a difficult time being more transparent because they don't have the required information. We also talked about the issue that now we often see that there's a uh, not, there are not necessarily enough vaccine doses, but there is also problems that we are seeing in administering those doses. We are looking within the G7 countries how we could help provide more specific help, human resources, equipment, for example, to help these countries administer vaccines more quickly and effectively. Question. Dr. New, did you have something to add? Yes, I'd like to add uh, something on the technical side from the perspective of public, he of public health. As Mr. Duclos indicated, it really is an issue of epidemiology. In some countries, there is uh, clear information that uh, there is community transmission. We see that uh, travelers who have come back to Canada, who went through those countries, uh, may have been exposed to community transmission. But we really have to also thank, I think, South Africa to for having the capacity to detect this new variant and to tell the world about it. So I think that with the measures with our border measures, it really is just to give us more time to better understand uh, the new variant. There are three main issues. Is it more transmissible? Does it lead to more severe health consequences? And is there an impact on vaccine efficiency? We don't have those answers yet, but the scientists across the world are working very closely together to find those answers. So for now, these measures are really just to slow down the propagation of the virus. We can't close down our borders because the virus has already arrived here and in many other countries. This is a measure to gain time in order to have a better understanding of the virus and have a better understanding of how to adapt, what next steps to take, perhaps change our approach. I'd like to highlight another point that Minister Duclos already mentioned. We we already have good protection here, good vaccine coverage. The predominant variants in Canada right now, or the variant right now, is the Delta variant, and the vaccines are quite effective against it. So, again, it's important to stress how, how useful it is to get vaccinated, how important, and we have very clear evidence showing at a population level how measures such as uh, wearing masks, avoiding gathering inside, uh, being socially distanced um, are good measures, good ventilation as well. People are moving indoors, so that is very important. So those are all important measures to continue to apply. It is also important to continue to follow local health authority directives, which are based on the epidemic and that's how we are going to continue to react to COVID-19 and this new variant as well. Thank you. Follow-up question. The WHO has uh, asked for calm, has called for calm and uh, called for an end to brutal uh, measures such as uh, closing down borders. Do you think uh, Canada is one of those countries that they were, those comments were aimed at? Answer, well, well, I think uh, we are doing things right in Canada from the beginning of the pandemic. We can always do better, of course, but I think we have done very well. And this is something that uh, Canadians have to know that they have been working hard as well. We are working closely with our foreign partners as well. 
So we are in a very specific situation. We already have solid protective layers from the beginning of the pandemic, uh, including border measures. But in this case, Public Health Canada believes that uh, the PHEC rather believes that these additional layers will help slow down the spread of the Omicron variant. Yeah, um, this first one's from Minister Algabra. We're hearing a lot of uh, reports, albeit anecdotal, uh, about travelers flying currently who aren't being asked for their vaccine proof. They're going through all the necessary checks, but no one is actually asking for their proof. Are you comfortable with the rate at which airlines are enforcing this policy? Uh, thanks for the question. Um, we've um, announced a vaccine mandate, a requirement of all travelers on planes and trains. Uh, last August, uh, uh, we then uh, campaigned on it in the last election. And when we, uh, uh, um, re when we formed government, again, we announced that the the creation of a two-phase approach for this mandate. Phase one was October 30th, and we granted um, uh, uh, some grace period for this month, including uh, the allowance of PCR tests as a, a substitute for uh, not being vaccinated. And part of the grace period is uh, given some time to operators and airlines to prepare their systems for uh, checking of all proof of vaccination of all travelers. And what had happened between October 30th and today, we had system of random checks. As of today, all passengers uh, will be checked for proof of vaccination. And then, uh, Mr. Uclo, on the NACI, uh, advice to NACI the, on the booster shots, are you looking them at them to reevaluate their advice on booster shots or change it? Do you think we may need boosters earlier than perhaps they'd suggested? That's right. We're we are asking for uh, relatively quick advice, renewed advice on, on boosters. I know that uh, we are, we we know that Canadians uh, are asking increasingly about w whether they should. And, and, and whether and how that should be done, receive uh, boosters. And that question is obviously of greater importance now with the, uh, the, the, the new variant. So we are explicitly asking NASI to come up uh, quickly with a, a revised view on where and how and to whom these boosters should be administered. Hi there. Um, yeah, my question is for uh, Minister Duclos. Um, just recently, the CMA put out a report saying there have been thousands of excess deaths due to delayed surgeries and procedures because of uh, COVID-19 complications in hospitals, and saying it would cost about $1.3 billion to address these backlogs by June. Um, are you looking at increasing the transfers to the provinces to try to you know, best address these backlogs in the hardest hit areas? Well, thank you. And our own estimate which is, of course, uh, dependent on the information that we receive from provinces and, ter and territories, is that it would, there would be approximately 780,000 uh, delayed surgeries in Canada at this particular time. Uh, our understanding is that the delay, the, those delays are being reduced uh, slowly because we you know the, uh, you know, the, 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 the the pandemic is is relatively under greater control now than it used to be, say, in a few weeks or a few months ago. This being said, there's a lot of work to do to protect the health of Canadians. Now, one more good news is that uh, we've promised in the campaigns very significant and quick investments to address things like uh, backlogs in surgeries, but also access to primary care, uh, long-term care, home care, uh, mental health care. So we have a total of $25 billion that we want to invest quickly in support to the priorities of provinces and territories. And we know that one of these priorities is exactly that, to, to handle the backlogs in surgeries. And uh, this morning we had the CEO of Moderna saying he's worried that uh, the current vaccines may not be as effective against the Omicron variant as uh, we've seen in the, as we've seen with past variants. Um, with that in mind, can you give us an update on what you've heard latest from Health Canada on reviewing uh, some of the antivirals from companies like Merck and Pfizer? Um, just what the status is there and has Canada begun purchasing any of these pills? Well, on the last question, I can tell you that we have very strong and very good procurement um, 
contracts with, um, well, seven, as you might remember, seven uh, companies, four of which we already have the, uh, the ability to administer doses from. So it's a, it's a portfolio that from the start we knew was going to be very strong, and it did show that we had made, not we as politicians, but experts, uh, made the right choice. And we have 420 million doses uh, uh, on order uh, and, uh, and therefore su sufficiently so to, uh, to give Canadians the vaccine that they need. Now, on your first question, uh, I would prefer to turn to Dr. New because it's, a, it's an issue which uh, Dr. New uh, knows more about. Yes, I think if you're referring to the question of therapeutics, uh, definitely, I think uh, we all know the, the old saying that, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so certainly, uh, as Minister Duclos has said, you know, we've been well with our, our vaccines in terms of both our procurement and obviously the rollout uh, across the provinces and territories. But we always know that, you know, a certain proportion of the population uh, will be un unvaccinated due to, a, you know, a number of uh, circumstances. And even in those uh, who are vaccinated, uh, we're seeing some breakthrough infections. And so it's always important to look at what's out there in terms of therapeutics, in terms of treating those who uh, do become infected. Uh, uh, at, the, at the present time, uh, we have quite a number of what we call uh, uh, therapeutics uh, monoclonal antibodies and so on that are being used more in the hospital setting to treat severe cases uh, of, of illness, uh, you know, from uh, COVID-19. And they're being used, obviously, by the specialists and uh, in sort of uh, uh, certain uh, circumstances. But uh, what's very promising on the horizon is the fact that uh, there are a number of uh, what we call oral uh, uh, sort of therapeutics which could be taken sort of out of the hospital setting, which doesn't require the same kind of, you know, expertise because of intravenous administration and so on. So uh, things are, are looking well. Uh, uh, the government of Canada is uh, in sort of uh, advanced stages of uh, discussions with, uh, at this point, uh, two companies, Merck and Pfizer, in terms of what we call advanced purchase agreements. Uh, uh, but obviously, at the same time, you know, for Merck, I understand there's a rolling submission uh, that's still uh, sort of being looked at uh, by Health Canada, and we anticipate uh, a similar submission from Pfizer. Pfizer, uh, you know, in, in the coming uh, uh, days and, and or weeks. Uh, so so that's what's going on. And obviously, Health Canada will do uh, what they need to do in looking at the uh, clinical trial data to, to, to look at the efficacy uh, results from the trials and then obviously uh, uh, make a regulatory decision and uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, look at the indications based on, on the data they receive. Uh, what we're also doing, though, then, is that we're looking at uh, having consultations uh, both with, uh, I would say, the uh, clinical experts across Canada, but also with the, the, the public health experts in terms of uh, should these therapeutics become available, how would they uh, best be used in sort of a, in, a, in a practical setting in terms of implementation. So I, all I can say is at this point, things are things are looking promising in both uh, uh, sort of the regulatory process, but also in terms of the, the planning and the thinking about how these types of therapeutics could be best used uh, uh, in the provinces and territories uh, once they become available. Thank you. Hi, David Thornton, CBC News. Uh, thanks for taking our questions. Uh, can you just clarify for me, when do these measures, particularly testing, wh when does that kick into to place, so into gear here? If I, if I heard you correctly, it's today. If so, what time today will travelers arriving into Canada have to do the testing? And what impact does this have on people who are coming from the U.S., either transiting through? Because, of course, that has been a backdoor for people to come into the country too, and there have been concerns about testing at that border too. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll try to answer the three questions, although some of these would be more in the domain of my, my colleagues. First, on the, uh, the, the um, matter that uh, Minister Algarbra mentioned when, we, when he spoke about when the, uh, the requirement for people coming to Canada, having spent time in the last 14 days in those 10 countries, the requirement for those people to be tested at their last country, in their last country before entering into Canada, that was going to take effect tonight. Now, the other, um, the second thing about you know, orders in council or orders is about the um, the inclusion of the three new countries in the set of 10 for uh, those uh, for banning any foreign national having traveled through these 14 these, these 10 countries in the last 14 days and and uh, 
asking all Canadians that have traveled in these places in the last 14 days to be tested and to wait for their test result. So that those those requirements will be uh, will be put into an order in council, which will most likely um, apply tomorrow. So um, in a few hours from now, and for the testing procedures, testing vaccinated and unvaccinated air travelers entering into Canada, that will be done as quickly and as much as possible over the next few days. Now, obviously, no, that can't take place immediately everywhere at the same speed, but we have full confidence in the system and in particular in our collaboration with, with provinces and territories. Because some of these um, test, uh, testing procedures, testing uh, events, uh, and then the follow-up with quarantine, some of that, and sometimes much of that, uh, require the collaboration and the participation of provinces and territories. But we believe and we have full confidence that this is going to unroll uh, quickly uh, over the next few days. So I, I just want to follow up on that. So how soon or what is the latest that we could see this implementation of, of testing and it's only at airports, from what I understand. And will travelers have to pay for this test, or will the government pay for it? Well, let me give you a number. We are currently uh, across the entire set of entry points in Canada, both through land and through air. We're currently uh, delivering about 20,000 tests per day. And we need to move to about 32,000 tests per day to be able to do what we already do, including randomly testing those that come through the land border. But let's, because let's remember that land tra travelers are, are, either they are tested necessarily if they come unvaccinated or they are tested randomly, about a quarter of them if they travel uh, to Canada at this particular time. So we'll move from 20,000 to about 32,000, which is a significant increase, and that's why it's going to take a, a little while for that uh, to, to happen. Just, um, I'm sorry, Chris, I'm, I know you were next, but your outlet got a question, so we're going to get out other outlets who didn't ask a question to ask questions. CTV. I was the only one in line, CTV, so... Uh, Let's go, go CTV, then the Devoir, and then the phone line. He lines. came up after me. So. And the ministers have a, a hard stop at 508, so CTV. Hi, Hi Jordan Galling, CTV News. Uh, my first question is, uh, is your government considering a blanket travel ban, as Israel has done? I mean, is really this piecemeal approach of banning certain countries really going to be effective, given that this variant is now in Britain, Netherlands, and elsewhere? Well, the first thing I want to say in response to that question is, is that the government will never hesitate to put in place the protections that are necessary to protect Canadians from the virus. Um, uh, that includes putting in place uh, the travel restrictions, uh, including uh, those who are transiting through uh, the listed countries, uh, three of which we are adding uh, to uh, today. Um, it includes uh, making sure that we have the necessary testing regime. Uh, it includes um, making sure that we have as a baseline uh, of protection vaccinations, which is the first and uh, best line of defense uh, against the virus. So um, we have never uh, hesitated to follow uh, the advice that we're getting from our public health care officials, uh, which uh, we continue to uh, receive in real time, particularly with the advent of uh, this variant of concern. And we believe that, um, that the measures that we have in place are appropriate. Um, we know that uh, the Canadians are, are going to uh, watch this very closely as are we and we'll take whatever decisions are necessary. And just to go back to NACI recommendations on boosters, Minister Duclos, can you give us a specific timeline on that? And should provinces even be waiting around for these recommendations, given that the U.S. and the CDC have acted very quickly on moving, moving that out? Okay. Well, there are two reasons to, uh, to ask uh, NACI to do this quickly. By the way, this is an independent committee and we're not going to force any uh, experts to provide advice which they find is too early for them to, uh, to provide. So the two reasons are A, that there is a growing interest among Canadians from different provinces and territories in this particular issue. Well, Christmas is coming, many, of Cana many, of, uh, uh, many Canadians have been vaccinated now by 
close to six months, in some cases more than six months, and they hear that outside of the country, um, and some of them that you've quoted, the, uh, the use of both boosters has been more uh, widely uh, available. So they are curious, and they would like to know from the federal government what the federal experts think about the use of boosters overall across Canada. The second reason is obviously the advent, the advent of this variant, which is uh, a source of concern, not a source of panic, a source of concern. And, uh, and in that uh, context, NACI may want to consider a, a precaution uh, with, within the current environment as one more reason to, uh, to renew and revise its advice. Thank you. Bonjour Boris pour le devoir. Je voulais savoir si c'était très clair peut-être pour les voyageurs canadiens. Question. It wasn't quite clear perhaps from for Canadian travelers. I understand that for all those coming back to the country through air, there will be a test at the border, except those coming in from the U.S. What's happening with the quarantine? There was a quarantine requirement at one point in a secure location or at home, it, will there be none of that? Or um, could you please explain what Canadians can expect? Answer, it's two plus two. Those two are uh, the U.S. and not the U.S. So today's measures announced today apply to those coming from countries outside of the U.S., elsewhere from the U.S. The other two are vaccinated and unvaccinated. The measures that apply to unvaccinated people are the same. They've been the same for a while. Those who arrive uh, through various means in the country must be tested on day one when they arrive at the border, on day eight, and continue their quarantine for 14 days. That's the two plus two. Now, what's going to change today is that for vaccinated travelers who arrive at Canadian airports from countries other than the U.S., Currently, those travelers don't always need to be tested and do not necessarily need, need to be tested. Even if they do take a test, they will have to start taking tests and be in isolation. Uh, if try to be equally logical while awaiting the results. So you've got. Um, the United States and the rest of the world. So what we are focusing on today is measures for people coming from the rest of the world, including the United States. Now, the other two is vaccinated, unvaccinated. The rules around those that are not vaccinated are not changing today. No, it's the same rules apply when someone comes into Canada with a right of entry. They, that person needs to be tested at the land or at the uh, air uh, port, and that person needs to quarantine for 14 days and need to be tested once more on day eight. What changes today is the rule for those that are vaccinated coming into an airport in Canada. Those people will need to be tested on arrival at the airport and wait, and isolate and wait until their test result is known before uh, exiting their isolation period. My follow-up question, this is for the public health doctors. I'd like to know how many cases of the Omicron variant have been found in Canada and whether the measures announced by the government are enough for you or if you'd rather have more. Are you reassured regarding the measures announced? for the Omicron variant. Answer. Hello, this is Dr. New. Perhaps I could start and Dr. Tam could add uh, her information. We've seen four cases from Ontario and a first case in Quebec of the Omicron variant. Honestly, I don't know what is going uh, to happen in Alberta. Uh, there's a time difference, uh, but they're looking into one of the cases. So there may be up to six cases to date. We are expecting that there may be other cases because with our good monitoring system now and our labs, which are very well equipped to do sequencing, 
and other work required to identify the Omicron variant, uh, that work can be done. So that's one thing. For the second question, if I understood correctly, uh, Dr. Tam and I and others always provide our recommendations, what the evidence is uh, what the evidence is. So we provide that information, and with that information, Dr. Tam and I and others, all uh, public health experts, uh, also provide various options to the ministers. Of course, that information is confidential, but there are always a number of options presented. In the end, it is the ministers who decide which measures and decisions are to make. That's what I can tell you. But as I already stated, our border measures, as we can see, are measures to slow down the propagation of the virus to gain time so that we can answer those three main questions regarding variants of concerns. So we'll adapt as time goes on based on what's necessary. Thank you. No, on va passer, uh, au link téléphonique. We are going to move to the phone lines. Chris, il y a des règles à There are rules that you need to follow, Chris. So are people going to have to quarantine in quarantine hotels? Are they going to have to quarantine in their homes? without other family members because we're getting into Christmas, the holidays. We're looking for cl clarity about the quarantine for the unvax and vaccination. And that's just my question. I need that clarity, please. Good, and uh, I'll try to be clear. So the what, we, what is called the designated quarantine facility, that's going to be used only for two, case, two types of, of, of travelers. Those that come into Canada uh, without a safe place to quarantine and those that come to Canada from the 10 countries that we have uh, signaled. The other, con the other travelers, in particular those that are vaccinated, Canadians that are vaccinated returning to Canada, don't need to go to a designated quarantine facility to wait for their day one test result. Bon, alors, peut passer All right, Chris, we can move to the phone lines now. We have about 10 minutes left. So we will start with the first question. Please keep it short, both on the question and answer sides. Operator. Thank you, merci. You may press star one if you have a question. You can press on étoile one if you have a question. The first question is from Tonda McCharles from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Um, Minister Duclos, I wonder if you could just clarify the, the testing requirement for air travelers arriving from non-U.S. countries. Um, do those people still have to do the, pre, the 72 hour pre-departure PCR test in addition to the on-arrival test? And for the on-arrival test on day one, who pays for that? And, if it, uh, and what is the cost of a test like that? Uh, the answer is yes to your first question. They need to do a pre-departure test um, before arriving to Canada, and they need to do a day one test uh, if they are vaccinated. If they are not vaccinated, as I said earlier, a day one test, a day eight test, and a 14-day uh, quarantine. Now, who pays for the arrival test? That's the federal government. It's always been like that, and it will continue to be so. And can you speak to um, your thinking around why you've, you've, you've chosen to add three more countries when, and I think you addressed some of this in French, but um, when it's clear today that this variant has popped up in many other countries, Australia, Hong Kong, Belgium, well, you know, you're, you're banning Egypt because a traveler came through Egypt, but in Belgium, it's, it's shown up there, right? So I, I'd like to understand why you feel that a more general travel suspension isn't in order. For two reasons. The first one is that uh, community transmission in the 10 countries, as Dr. New said earlier, is of concern, not only to Canada, but to our international partners. We were discussing that uh, yesterday with the G7 uh, health ministers. Now, the second reason uh, to explain part of your, of, your, uh, of your questions is that we have double layers. 
uh, well, in fact, triple layers, because when someone travels, say, from a particular country to, uh, to the UK before uh, boarding to come to Canada, that person will first be subjected to UK rules uh, for traveling, and then they will be they will ask to show a pre-departure test in, say, London before boarding on the Canadian plane, and then when they arrive in Canada, they have another test, a day one test, to make sure that they don't have uh, the vaccine and the variant. So that's because both of our, the strictness of our border measures, which is you know, a, a level of, of, of strength that you rarely see in other countries. So we compare very favorably from the start of the crisis with m all, all comparable countries when it comes to uh, protecting the health and safety of Canadians because of our border measures. So it's because of that. It's also because of our geographical location. Now we, are, we have only one land border and everyone else needs to enter by, by an airport. So because of that, we, ha we have this ability, this unique ability to have multiple layers of, of protection, which is, a, is sometimes more difficult for other countries. Prochaine question au téléphone. Next question over the telephone. Thank you, merci. The next question is from uh, Christy Kirkup from the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. If there's any concern that perhaps Canada could end up on a travel ban list of another country, given the fact that we already have a number of confirmed cases here and uh, there are investigations underway for several other cases. Well, the good news about having a, a good system, as we have in Canada, is that we can identify the, the cases. So it's, it's perhaps a bit surprised, strange to say so, but when we detect and communicate the presence of cases in Canada, that's good because it's, it's, it, just speak, it just says that our public health system works. And the fact that we were able to identify those cases of travelers you know, not long after they have landed into Canada, that's a great testimony to the fact that uh, our public health system, both at the federal and provincial levels, uh, work as they should not. Never, no, nothing is never perfect. No, it, as Dr. Tam might want to say in a moment, no, there will be most likely community transmission of the new variant at some point in Canada. We see no evidence of this now uh, because, as I said, uh, we have been able to detect the cases of those travelers um, because of our uh, border and other public health measures. Dr. Tam, would you want to add to that? Yes, thank you for that question. And maybe just also um, partly answer what Tonda McCharles had asked before as well. So we use different criteria for uh, flagging countries of concern. So the three additional countries that we're adding today, they have not yet reported Omicron variant in their own country prior to other countries reporting importations from those countries. So including Belgium, Israel, Hong Kong, South Korea, and now Canada, who've detected cases before the uh, country of origin has detected cases. And this tells us that there may be some uncertainty in the country's overall epidemiologic situation and their ability to detect and respond. These countries also have very low vaccine coverage. And as, as I've said, exported cases, and they have not yet reported themselves. Another parameter we've looked at is our positivity rate on arrival in Canada. So we have this post-arrival testing, and from that, we could detect that there's been a rise in positivity rate, for example, from Egypt and from Nigeria. And indeed, we now have confirmed Omicron cases. Um, all of our cases reported so far have been from Nigeria and then the volume of travelers into Canada. So these are the several criteria that we use uh, to pay particular attention to certain countries. The follow-up? Yes, thank you. I I'm wondering, how is it ethical to be talking today about potential booster shots for healthy Canadians, given the fact that experts are decrying so-called um, inoculation hoarding by Western countries? I may take uh, this question. Well, we know that this pandemic is going to end 
only when it ends globally. And that's why we must obviously look after the health and safety of Canadians, but we also must be supporting other uh, countries, especially those that are, uh, that are less developed and have a, a, certainly a, a public health system that is less developed. And this, uh, and I believe Dr. Tam uh, has, uh, has been very uh, active and influential in, in explaining why and how we need to do this. This is what we've done uh, ever since we uh, started the pandemic. So we are among world, uh, among any other comparable country, among the world leaders when it comes to supporting the, di the uh, distribution of vaccine doses through COVAX, uh, to which we are one of the top contributors. We have also uh, signaled uh, the Prime Minister has also said that we will be distributing 200 million doses over the next year. Many of these doses have already started to be sent. But we also have an additional um, channel through which we want to help those, uh, those mostly developing countries through direct assistance for them to have the technology and the human resources necessary to actually administer those doses in an efficient an equitable manner within their country. So I, I, I recognize, and we all recognize, that this is a double challenge, but I think Canada is quite good uh, compared certainly to many other countries in addressing that uh, dual challenge. Merci beaucoup. On a le temps pour une dernière question au téléphone, opérateur. Thank you very much. We have the time for one last question, operator. The next question is from Laura Osman from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to build on Christie's question because the WHO has specifically asked countries not to vaccinate or not to vaccinate healthy adults, not to give them boosters when high risk people in countries with much lower vaccine coverage are still struggling. Um, what is your response to that? How do we justify that? Well, as I just tried to explain, we are doing this now. Now we've we've all, we've we started that many months ago, uh, sending doses either through COVAX, uh, either in, in kind doses or through uh, financial arrangements with COVAX, or either through bilateral arrangements directly with some uh, of the countries. And we have increased our development assistance significantly because of COVID-19 in order to provide the human resource and technological resources that countries around the world uh, need and expect uh, uh, to be able to do their um, vaccine administration. Uh, thank you. I also wanted to ask, because obviously Omicron is already in Canada, you're going to be speaking with the provinces and territories this evening. Do you think there will be any discussion of domestic measures to try to quash the spread of this new variant? I'm sure there will be, uh, because we are all working for the same people and for the same objectives of protecting their health and safety. And as we know now, now public health measures and vaccination are the key uh, measures to protecting our health and safety. Merci beaucoup. Ce qui met fin Thank à you cette very much. This uh, is the end of the press conference. Thank you, ministers. Merci.